Hi and welcome to video three looking at the uh, the market failure aspect of the A level. Um, you join me again in 4184 and it's a largely a revisit on positive and externalities, uh, sorry, positive and negative externalities in, uh, in production at the moment. Uh, we'll do uh, consumption later on. We started by looking at the uh, the private transaction in the market. This is essentially where supply equals demand as you know it. But because we have to deal with marginal analysis in, in the A-level, we have to recognize that uh, the supply curve is now the marginal private cost curve and the, uh, the demand curve is now the marginal private benefit curve. The outcome is still the same though. The price that is paid will be determined by where those two are in equilibrium. However, that would usually represent market failure because where, that, where the transaction takes place, there are often external costs or external benefits that are not accounted for in that private transaction. So now, this is taking supply and demand one step further. Not only do you need to know about the private costs, but you also need to know about the external costs, other costs that are incurred because of the transaction, but are not accounted for within the price and therefore at the moment are unaccounted for and have not been internalized. So at the moment they are marginal external costs. Put them together and in a way you have the total cost. Now what we would refer that to, uh, what we refer um, to that as, is the marginal social cost. So that would be the external costs and the private costs put together. Similarly, on the other side of the coin, uh, the, the consumer only considers their own individual benefits. So the marginal private benefits are uh, accounted for by the demand curve. However, there may be other benefits that would arise as a result of these two individuals taking uh, place, uh, sorry, taking part in this transaction. And those external benefits are known as the marginal external benefits. And again, if you put them together, the private benefits and the external benefits, you have the marginal social benefits. So what is the equilibrium point that we're re really aiming for? Well, the, 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 the best allocation of resources for society would be um, shown by the point of which marginal social costs are equal to marginal social benefits. So that's what we're looking for. Once it's there, then the market is, is no longer failing. However, as most markets are just supply and demand or marginal private costs and marginal private benefits, the market usually fails to account for the external costs or external benefits. We looked at a, a quantitative example here, a very basic one, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But it focused on, on pollution being ignored by suppliers. And that was because of this, a new A-level issue, uh, because of the absence of property rights. That is why pollution is often ignored. So one thing the government could try to do is assign property rights to pollution in some way. And then that would help internalise uh, the costs, uh, the damage done, if you like, by the pollution as a result of that transaction, it would be internalized. And that three pounds, um, three pounds cost uh, caused by pollution would be internalized in the transaction. And the price would probably be set at 18 pounds rather than 15, as it currently would be if the firm only considers their own costs. However, we want to move on. I'm going to remind ourselves of this slide here, and this is this is a lot, this is one I've actually bought in from OCR from last year. Um, just to be clear, when we looked at market structures, we also looked at allocative efficiency. In a market structure, that was where the price, i.e., the value that the consumer attached to the unit, was equal to the costs incurred by the supplier uh, in terms of, of producing that unit. When they were in uh, in equilibrium, then we would argue that allocative efficiency has been achieved. And we assumed that the, that transaction uh, meant no exter externalities were incurred. So for allocative efficiency to be achieved, the price must reflect the true cost, the social cost, and the true benefit, as in the social benefit of the transaction. So we're looking for where marginal social cost is equal to marginal social benefit. And this brings us to our first sort of diagram. And you will recognize this, something similar to this, I'm sure, when you looked at market failure at AS. I'm not going to uh, bang on too long about this because I've got some much better videos uh, by, by Welker a little later on. But if we look at this simple video here, sorry, this simple slide here, we can see the private cost, which would have been a supply curve as you know it, and the private benefit, i.e. the demand curve, produces an equilibrium point at A. At a. And that means the price 
with its transaction is P1 and Q1 is being produced. So that's the outcome of the free market, supply and demand equilibrium point A. But what's been ignored? Well, what's been ignored are the social costs, or, or rather the difference between the social cost and the private cost at this quantity. That difference between A and B are the marginal external costs. So really, the, the, the transaction is not internalizing the additional costs born out of that transaction. So what should happen? Well, we can see that A and B indicates the marginal external costs. The free market produces Q1, but of course we know the, the allocator efficiency is going to be achieved where the marginal social cost is the same as a marginal social benefit. We can see the marginal social cost is up here, but we don't see the marginal social benefit. And that is because, or, or rather when we don't see that, we have to assume that the private benefits and the social benefits are the same, i.e. there are no marginal external benefits to this transaction. So this, this curve here represents both the social and the private benefits. So if that is the social benefit curve, we want it to meet move that back we want it to meet the marginal social cost and that is point c on the diagram okay so point c is where um the uh, the, the social op the socially optimal uh, amount of uh, of the of this product should be produced so q2 is what we're aiming for but at the moment q1 is being produced by a free market so we can see the free market over produces what does the area ABC indicate? Well, this is probably a step up from AS because this triangle here, we've seen it before in uh, in market structures, this triangle of ABC represents the deadweight loss or the loss of welfare. Okay, no one is benefiting there. We want to get rid of that. Now, one other side uh, question to this is why is the private cost curve not exactly parallel to the social cost curve. Why is it pivoting away somewhat? Well, that is because in this example, um, we, we are assuming that with each additional unit um, the, uh, the, that is being produced, the external cost, i.e. the difference between these two cost curves, is actually increasing. So therefore, this social cost is climbing at a slightly greater rate as the uh, as the private cost curve. Now, let me be really clear, you don't need to do that. And in fact, when you watch the videos later on, you will not see pivoting curves. In the textbook, you will see pivoting curves uh, and, and uh, like that. But you don't need to do that. Okay, you can, you can draw them parallel. That's not a problem. So let me bring you to our first video here. Now, I've, I've given you the slides and hopefully you can do this. There, there, there have been some problems when you, um, when you play the slides, but if you can't open uh, the embedded video, then please just follow the link uh, beneath it. And there's some questions there to get to know. And what I really like about the, these Welka videos, they're about 13 minutes, but the graphical analysis is absolutely superb. It's exactly what you should be doing in terms of your analysis of a market failure diagram. He's also very, very good with his examples, um, and I would advise you to take as many notes as you can with that. Uh, and the, the, the actual diagrams, not only do they also include deadweight loss, they take it that step further. They're all marginal analysis diagrams, of course, but he also considers solutions, um, which, of course, you will be familiar with. And in this case, he's, he considers the, uh, the regulation that could take place when dealing with the negative externalities of production. And let's be clear, these are negative externalities of production. I will then switch, of course, to the other side of the production coin, if you will. And that is where uh, production can cause positive externalities. And we can he see here, we have a similar situation. The private cost and the, the private benefit, which we have to assume is the same as a social benefit here, means that the free market is is uh, having a price at P1 and quantity Q1. They're in equilibrium at point A. However, the ideal scenario for the, for the society is point B, where the social cost, in this case, all the marginal ex social external benefits are, are also recognized. So really, we should be producing Q star and charging uh, P star. Okay, and point B would, would represent... Um, the equilibrium between the social cost and the social benefits. So that again is the ideal. That's where allocative efficiency would be uh, would be uh, achieved. 
Again, Welker has another video, Positive Externalities. Brilliant, same steps. Follow these four steps here. Be really careful to get the marginal analysis down because that is really, really strong in these ones. Uh, and again, he considers another solution. In this case, he looks at a subsidy affecting the marginal analysis curves. Finally, there's something you can do here, and that is just a little bit of uh, playing around with some um, private costs, um, private benefits, external costs, external benefits of four examples. And uh, this I think you would have done if Robbo taught you last year, but it's quite a nice little activity just to get you thinking about the difference between the two. Anyway, that's it for the third video. Next up, I'll look at um, externalities caused by consumption.